Hi guys, welcome back to the Ardor server and welcome back to part two of the hybrid desktop PC server build series. In part two, I'm gonna go over the desktop side of this build and show you all the components my son and I chose for it. In our family, we tend not to be early adopters, especially when it comes to technologies like computers, televisions, cameras, or even experimental vaccines. So just as AMD released Zen 4 CPUs, we decided to base this build on the previous generation AMD Ryzen platform. Here, we're going to use a Ryzen 9 5900X with 64 gigabytes of DDR4, 3600 megahertz from Corsair's Vengeance RGB RT product line. Tying this together is the ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus motherboard. We chose this motherboard mostly because it was readily available at a decent price and had almost everything we needed. I think we would have preferred the X570 Pro, but it was out of stock at the time. Cooling for the 5900X will be handled by the Noctua NHD15S Chromax Black. We didn't go for any water cooling or even AIOs because we knew space was going to be very limited since we were going to install a lot of hard drives for the server part of this build. And frankly, these Noctua coolers perform really well and even better than a lot of the AIO coolers. For storage, we have a pair of 2TB Samsung 980 Pro M.2 SSDs to take full advantage of the PCIe 4.0 bus. This pair will be set up as a mirrored boot drive for the OS, which is Fedora Workstation Linux. I know most people don't think to build their desktop PC with a mirrored boot drive, but coming from the server world, I couldn't get myself to abandon this practice. Additionally, we have a pair of 4TB SATA SSDs from Crucial's MX500 line. The SATA pair will also be mirrored and used to store user home directories. Considering how cheap it was to get the 4TB SSDs, the desktop side will not have any spinning hard drives. Archival storage and regular backups will be pushed to the server side of this build. For the power supply, we had to choose something that could power both the desktop and server, and so we went with the Fantex Revolt X1200. I wanted to keep things as compact as possible, so the Revolt X was better than using dual power supplies. On top of that, this power supply comes with a 12 year warranty, which should outlast the usefulness of the system. I'll elaborate more about how this power supply works later in the video, but that's the choice we went with. Finally, all of these components will be housed in the Fantex Evolve X case. I recorded a little segment during the build where I explained more about this case, so I'll let myself elaborate on that in a moment here. However, before we get it started, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm so we can get this video out to more people. Also, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss part three of this series. All right, guys, so this is the Fantex Evolve X case that's going to be the centerpiece of this build. And so I just want to take a moment here to describe to you two of the reasons why I think this case is very interesting for a build like this. So if you open up the case over here, obviously there's this place where you uh, install the standard ATX motherboard. And up here is actually an additional space where you can install this bracket right here. And what this is, is a mini ITX motherboard tray. And so this allows you to install a second system into this chassis where you can have your primary desktop PC and have a mini ITX server motherboard up here, both in one system. So that's one of the reasons why I think this case is really interesting because it allows you to build your, your standard PC as, uh, as well as a mini ITX server all in the same chassis. Now, the second reason why I think this case is really interesting is because when we're talking about home servers, primarily we're talking about storage servers. And this case comes with four of these brackets right here. And these are three and a half inch drive mounting brackets. And by default, it comes with four of these that can be mounted inside the chassis under here uh, with the power supply chamber. And so that gives you four three and a half inch drive slots. But in addition to that, these panels right here can come off and you can buy six additional brackets like these where you can install these brackets over here and mount six additional three and a half inch hard drives. So all together, you have enough space to mount four and six, so that's a total of 10 three and a half inch hard drives. But that's not all. So let's flip this machine or this uh, case to the other side here. So in addition to those 10 three and a half inch hard drive bays, 
if you open up this case here, there are these panels that are meant to hide the cabling, but on the other side of this, you'll notice these mounting holes right here, as well as the ones down here. And so these are two and a half inch drive mounting holes. And so there's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, two and a half inch drive mounting holes behind these panels. And these are primarily meant for things like SSDs and whatnot. But in addition to that, there are mounting holes you can see right here. Now these do require an additional bracket that I don't have with me right now, and it's an additional cost. But if you really needed more two and a half inch drives, you could buy those brackets to mount an additional three. So in total, we have three plus three plus three for a total of nine two and a half inch drives. So even if you were using this case purely just as a NAS build, you have enough drive space for 10 three and a half inch drives and nine two and a half inch drives, which is uh, quite a lot for a normal desktop PC case. So uh, this is a great uh, case for building a NAS by itself, uh, but we're also going to use the advantage of being able to uh, have your main PC while having a mini ITX server in this build and kind of do a hybrid desktop slash server build using this chassis. Okay, so I'm going to be unboxing the Motherboard Tough Gaming X570 Plus. So to start off, we have the Wi-Fi antenna here. We also have the Tough Gaming Motherboard. We also have some cables and IO shield, some screws. We also come, it comes with a Tough Gaming X570 series seat knee, uh, a Tough Gaming user guide. some badges a certificate of reliability so you can pause the video to read that all we also have some specific updates notifications some technical updates and other stuff and we also have this um, coupon thing here Okay, that's it.
right guys, so we have here the Noctua NHD15S cooler. And I just wanted to show you guys a feature, I guess if you want to call it that, that I think is really cool about this. So if you take a look at the, uh, the contact on the mounting point here, you'll notice that's a little bit offset to one side. And the Noctua engineers actually put some thought behind this. It's not some random mistake or anything like that. This is so that when you mount this cooler over here, it gives enough clearance and space for the graphics card and doesn't get in the way. There were some other, uh, I've used some old, older Noctua coolers where it was more symmetrical, where the mounting point was exactly in the middle. And sometimes it would kind of get in the way of where the graphics card is. So, so the Noctua engineers put a little bit of extra thought into the design of this NHD15S. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and install this. All right guys, so I want to talk a little bit about the power supply we're going to use today. This is a Fantex Revolt X uh, 1200 watt power supply. Now it is uh, Fantex branded and I think there was uh, some innovation from by Fantex, but it's actually manufactured by Seasonic. And if you know anything about Seasonic, they're one of the top tier power supply manufacturers and these people uh, clearly take a lot of pride in their work. So I really like uh, Seasonic power supplies. So the special thing about this power supply, and this is very particular to this build that we're doing today, is that it allows you to power two systems with one power supply. So that's very unique to this uh, particular build. And so if you're planning to do a build like this, you're definitely going to have to find this power supply. I think there's only like two models, one with the, with the uh, 1200 watt power supply, and I think there's a 1000 watt version of this as well. So we've got the manual. <clears throat> and one thing I really love about Seasonic is that their manuals are just beautiful. So um, if you've been around building PCs for a while, that's just kind of rare these days. But okay, so... Here's the power supply in a nice little pouch that it comes with and everything that comes in its own pouch. Here's the power cord and it's a fully modular power supply and so all the modular cables are in this pouch here and like I said this power supply can run two systems simultaneously so there's going to be two sets of cables basically. All right. So let me just put that out of the way. And let's take out this beauty here. So very, very nice machined uh, ventilation plate there. And so here are all the connectors and you can see it says system one, motherboard, CPU, and CPU two. Right, and then under here where we have covers, we have the connectors for motherboard number two and CPU 
So this, these connectors are basically a second set of connectors for the second motherboard that we're going to power the Mini ITX server board with while we power the main system with the, the top connectors here. All right, so if you're building this kind of hybrid desktop slash server system and you want to power two systems at once, you're going to need a power supply like this. And there aren't many power supplies like this, so this is kind of uh, a unique uh, component to this build. Hey guys, so ran into kind of an unexpected surprise here and I want to share this with you guys in case anybody else is trying to build a server using this uh, Fantex Evolve X case. So in an earlier clip, I talked about how you can mount a total of 10 three and a half inch hard drives and four of them go down in this compartment right here. And this is the back side where you can see the power supply and then these are the hard drive mounting brackets right here. So there's one, two, three, four of these. And then there's another six that go behind here. And I think those are gonna be fine, but what I noticed down here is that, see these brackets, once you install them, there is almost no clearance between the bracket and the power supply. And I'm using the Revolt X power supply. Now, if you're just doing one system, and you don't really need to plug in a lot of um, cables, you might be able to get away with it. So like right now, all I have is the primary motherboard cable and the uh, EPS to the CPU. And those are the only things plugged in right now. And I might be able to get away with some SATA connectors or something like that. But this second row here, hopefully you guys can see this. The second row here is actually for the second motherboard. And there's no way that I would be able to plug those cables in with this bracket in place. So this kind of, um, I think kind of dampens the, the uh, capability of this case because yeah, you can install hard drives here, but it kind of puts a lot of limitations on how you can use this power supply, especially if you're building a dual system um, in this, in this chassis that's just not going to be possible so i think i'm gonna to have to remove these two brackets and forego putting any hard drives here but that will still give me two drives here and once you, this is removed there's plenty of space for the cabling so i can at least have two drives here and then i can have the six drives up here so that i'll still have enough room for eight hard drives but 10 is uh really pushing the limits here and and putting a lot of limitations um on the ability to use the power supply. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys because I wasn't expecting that. When you read the specs of the case, it doesn't really um, kind of warn you that these two drive bays here are not really very practical. I mean, even if you were just building a single system, um, it's very, very tight here. So. It would be really difficult to plug in, um, say like the PCIe connector for the GPU or something like that. So anyway, just want to share that with you guys. Well guys, the desktop side of the build is uh, now complete here, as you can see. So we got the uh, motherboard and CPU and GPU and all that uh, set up. And I've actually already tested this uh, system so the OS is already installed and everything and everything uh, is working so the desktop side of this build is pretty much complete at this point and so I'm getting ready to uh, get the server side of this build uh, ready to install 
But there's a couple of things that I noticed that I just wanted to kind of point out. So this motherboard, uh, which is the Asus uh, Tough Gaming X570 Plus, does not have a Type E USB 3.0 port for the front panel uh, USB C. And so there's a cable here from the front panel that has nowhere to go. And so I had to go buy a USB uh, card basically. And so that's what I have down here. But it turns out when this USB card is installed in one of the PCI slots over there, this won't reach. So then I also had to get an extension cable for the USB uh, type E extension cable. So there was that. And also at the top here for the, uh, the CPU power, uh, the standard eight pin was fine, but the four pin, uh, at least from the cables that came with the PSU, uh, had a hard time reaching here. And so I ended up, I wasn't originally planning to use these, um, kind of fancy braided extensions, but I needed it anyway. So I figured, okay, I'm going to go get some. And my son told me that his favorite color was purple. And so we decided to go with a all purple theme here. And, uh, even with the inserts on the, uh, the knock to a cooler here. And so, uh, these, um, cable extensions were not originally part of the plan for this build, but you know, I, I had to buy some extensions anyway. And so it came as a set. So why not? And so here we are. And so I actually also need extensions for the server side, the mini ITX, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. But uh, yeah, I just want to point out that this cable wasn't long enough, so I had to basically an extension cable on that. And also another thing that I had not thought about initially is that down here, I've already installed the hard drive cage for two hard drives down in the power supply shroud area. But it made me realize that there's no airflow down there. And so as you can see, the stock fans that came with the case are only blowing into the main compartment of the case and not down in the uh, power supply area. So with the two hard drives spinning down there, um, I was concerned that they're not going to get any cooling. So I'm going to have to add an additional fan to this. So you can mount three 140 millimeter fans up front here. So I'm going to move these two up and then add a third one down there so that I can get some airflow over those hard drives. And then the other hard drives will be mounted right over here and they're going to get plenty of airflow from the front fans anyway. So they're going to be fine. It's just the, the two down here, they're going to need that extra fan. And so if you're building in this Fantex Evolve X case and you plan to use the hard drive bays uh, down here in the power supply shroud, you know, you have to think about uh, adding an extra fan to the front there. So anyway, I uh, just wanted to point that out. So I'm going to go ahead and install the USB card and get the USB-C front panel uh, port set up. And also uh, I've got a 10 gigabit Mellanox NIC that I'm going to put in to the other PCI slot over here. And yeah, right there. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to set the camera up on a tripod so that I can actually free my hands to go do all that. So. All right, so I'm gonna need to remove this bracket right here, and actually this one right here, third from the bottom, and then the first one from the bottom as well. So let's go ahead and take those out. I'm going to start with the, uh, so there's the 10 gig NIC. Then we're going to install the Mellanox. And uh, if you're looking for 10 gig NIC, like a simple one, just a single port SFP, uh, I got these in my eBay store, so go check that out. All right, and this is the uh, USB uh, 3.0 card. So I've got an extension cable for it, so. Just gonna plug it in right there. Okay. 
And I'm gonna tuck the extension cable to the back side of the motherboard tray. So that's all done. Uh, I'm gonna flip the machine around and connect the USB, um, the USB-C front panel cable in the back. All right, so here's that USB-C uh, cable from the front panel. Here's the extension cable that I have. And I think this should just, oh, maybe wrong way. All right, so that's plugged in. And I've already got, this is the, uh, ATX cable, uh, power cable to the second motherboard. So I've already got that prepped and ready to go. Once we get the mother, the server motherboard installed, we can basically hook this up. And that's it. So we've got the front panel USB all ready to go. So we've got to leave some room for the SATA cables down here when I close this. So, all right, that's it. One part that I didn't mention in this video, although I mentioned it in part one of the series, is the GPU. This was not a new part since my son was transplanting his Radeon RX 6700 XT from his Z800 to this machine. Because we were repurposing his current GPU, we didn't mention it in the video while we were building this. So I want to share some final thoughts about the desktop build. First, this was my first time using a Fantex case, and my first impression is mostly a positive one. The build quality is definitely there. I like that all the hardware came in its own organizer case. This case is heavy and you can feel it. I actually think it's comparable to the HP Z840 design, which I love, and perhaps even better, and definitely more modern. However, there were a few disappointments as well. First, I was actually looking forward to installing 10 three and a half inch drives, but as you saw, two of those drive bays really are not practical at all. I think Fantex could have made it more obvious that those two drive bays in front of the power supply are only usable in special situations, like with a much shorter power supply. There were also a lot of extra cost parts I had to buy, or would have to buy if I had planned to use them. This includes things like the 2.5-inch drive bracket behind the motherboard tray, the 6 additional 3.5-inch drive mounting brackets, of which I only needed 4 as it turns out. I also had to get an extra 140mm fan for the front, and the mini ITX bracket and PCI riser cable were quite expensive. Additionally, after having spent so much buying additional Fantex parts, it was disappointing that the Fantex Revolt X cables were sometimes not long enough, like the 4-pin EPS, or the front panel USB-C Type-E cable. Now, the USB-C Type-E cable probably would have worked with a motherboard that had a Type-E connector at the front of the motherboard, but all it needed was an extra 3 to 4 inches maybe, which Fantex could have anticipated. Another thing that I briefly mentioned and you guys will get to see what I mean in the next video in the series, is the need for a 24-pin ATX extension in order to power the mini ITX board. I mean, the Fantex Revolt X power supply and this Evolve X case were specifically designed with this dual system feature, so I don't understand how they didn't provide cables that were long enough for something as basic as the 24-pin ATX power to the mini ITX board. So all in all, the case is great and we got everything to work, but it just required a lot of little add-ons that added up to about an additional $200 or so which was quite annoying. That said, I still love this case, and more importantly, my son is really happy with his new computer. All right, guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, but if you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down twice just to be sure. Let me know in the comments what you liked or didn't like about this build so far. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing for more content like this. In the next video, I'll go over the server build part of this series. And if you're curious about the details of how the dual system power supply works or how the chassis cooling for the Evolve X works with two systems, be sure to set the notification bell to all so you don't miss that video when it comes out. 
Also, if you want to support this channel, check out my eBay store. I have the largest selection of HBA IT mode SAS controllers ready for your true NAS, ZFS, or Unraid builds. Check out the link down in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.